Mufti Mubashir, Mufti Fahad, Mufti Rafi, can you switch on your cameras kindly? <coughs> Brother Mubashir and Brother Rafi, can you switch on your camera kindly? Thank you. Brother Rafi, if you are available. Okay. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. As-salatu as-salamu ala rasulihi al-Nabi al-Kareem wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Thank you very much all for being here. And it's my pleasure and honor to once again welcome you on this session. Uh, today's session is about uh, uh, the CSAA Certified Sharia Auditor and Advisor course from um, IUFI, uh, the preparatory classes that we have start, we are starting. Uh, we have with us today uh, the panelist, uh, Mufti Fahad, is the Chief Coordinator for the course, uh, Mufti Mubashir and Mufti Rafi Usmani as well. Uh, these are the team who have prepared this course for you and you will have an opportunity to interact with them better and learn about the course and learn about what they have prepared for you. Uh, just before I invite uh, Mufti Fahad, like uh, some of you may be wondering where I'm sitting and what I'm doing. I'm this background and this uh, uh, that I have here is sort of symbolic. It's symbolic in the way that we, most of the time we believe or we, we assume that Sharia compliance makes things or makes our life difficult. The objective of showing you uh, this background is that Sharia compliance is something that will make your life that will make you feel relaxed, that will make your life easier. So Sharia compliance is not something that makes things difficult. Sharia compliance is something that makes things easier. The second objective of this background is to let you feel that what we have tried, and in fact, like serious time effort <clears throat> has been invested by all the panelists in preparing this course uh, to make sure, only to make sure that when you attend this course, you feel at home and you feel relaxed. You will have the opportunity to actually do it at your pace. You are not like is a self-paced course. So you are not bound by the classroom restrictions you can sit on the beach like I'm sitting now. I'm not, by the way, sitting on the beach. It is just the background. So you can feel like, feel at home and relax. So, and uh, you can anytime, anywhere, uh, based on your convenience, you can attend the course. You don't need to be restricted by the timetables <coughs> or, the, or the restrictions of the class. And you will have all the access and all the facilities of like being able to interact with the instructors that you normally have when you are attending a, a fixed classroom. So you, so with this course, you have the luxury of the self-paced course and uh, your time and your convenience. And you will also have the benefit of uh, being able to access the instructors who are one of the leading instructors on the subject and uh, who have already like done several sessions on these topics. Uh, so I will uh, not do their introductions. I will leave their introductions to themselves. So sit back, relax, and uh, feel that you are in good hands, inshallah. So with this, uh, as I like, I would like to sit back and relax and listen to you. I hand over the mic to Brother Mufti Fahad uh, to do a small introduction and uh, like, uh, and to do, he has a presentation as well. And then we will follow with the rest of the panelists. Thank you very much all, uh, Brother Mufti Fahad. 
mic is yours inshallah assalamu alaikum bismillahir rahmanir rahim nahmaduhu wa nusalli ala rasulihi alkareem amma ba'd fa a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem bismillahir rahmanir rahim before started to this session i just briefly introduce myself to you uh, my name is fahad ahmed qureshi and uh, i am senior research manager at international institute for uh, future research and i am one of your administrator for this course as well let me give you a little background of myself uh, as brother zia uh, ordered me to do so um, basically i belongs to pakistan and uh, i have done my grad school in lahore and uh, after that i joined jamia sharifia one of the most authentic and uh, prestigious islamic seminaries in the world and later i done my masters in islamic banking and finance from university of management and technology and uh, my phd from university of nottingham alhamdulillah along with the aforementioned mentions as a part of my professional qualification i am uh, certified professional accountant from association of international certified professional accountants also i have done chartered alternative investment analyst from caia association csaa fm va from corporate finance institute and islamic finance qualification level 3 from caisi as well so before uh, going deep further in it let me start with our today's presentation that we have developed for you and i hope that after having this uh, presentation you will be able to understand what is islamic finance qualification what are the available finance qualifications in the market and which one is perfect for you and why csaa is a perfect match for the uh practitioners sharia scholars and students who are going who are willing to uh start their career <clears throat> as uh, islamic finance professionals so bismillahir rahmanir rahim i hope you all are able to uh look um, you are or uh, you are all able to see the presentation yes okay alhamdulillah so uh this presentation is all about certified sharia advisor and auditor which is also termed as cisa or csaa sometimes and uh, this qualification is offered by iof iof is a uh, accounting and auditing organization for islamic financial institution and uh, which is based in bahrain and uh, acting as an international regulator or standard provider for all the islamic financial institution around the globe so this will be an overview of islamic finance qualification and the main principles behind it so let starting with it islamic finance in general uh, is a set of moral principles supported by a comprehensive legal system uh, governing and guiding economic and financial activities it emphasizes the balance uh, between uh, you can say for profit or market activities or on one side and non profit or philanthropic activities on the other by nature it is a universal system and the main principle behind uh, islamic finance is uh, uh, to or universally accepted principles are the major faith uh, followed by the major faiths throughout the world is economic balance if we look at eco economies all around the globe and throughout the histories uh, we will find out that no matter where we look at each and every economy would have 
two broad domains of economic activities. The first domain is termed as for-profit or market-based activities. And the second term is termed as non-profit or philanthropic activities. And regardless of what system is adopted or uh, what paradigm you are uh, followed or uh, you are looking into, uh, these two domains are always there. And now the problem is that how to reach the balance, how to achieve the balance between these two domains. And Islamic finance provide the necessary principles and guidelines that would help balance between these two domains. As we have discussed before, this qualification is uh, provided by IOFI. Let I introduce some uh, background or overview of IOFI with you. IOFI was established in 1991 and is based in Bahrain and is the leading international nonprofit organization primarily responsible, uh, you can say for development and issuance uh, of standard for the global Islamic finance industry. And for now, uh, till this date, IOFI has issued more than 100 standards in the area of Sharia, accounting, auditing, ethics and governance for international Islamic financial institutions. Whereas we are going to cover only first 48 standards as per the requirement of CISA exam. Uh, but I strongly recommend you to, to, uh, to look into the other standards as well, uh, as those standards will provide you a very comprehensive guideline to become a Sharia consultant, or you may set up your independent consultancy after that. Or uh, these standards not only provide you the guidelines uh, regarding uh, the code of conduct, the principles, the Sharia basis, the accounting of those instruments, which are only uh, practicing in Islamic financial institutions, but they will also provide you a comprehensive number of principles and guidelines which may help you in developing a Sharia compliant product based or a Sharia compliant incubation center for Islamic financial institutions or for uh, Islamic business activities. Uh, let uh, we look into the exam and the format of CISA and uh, I must recommend you to, cons to consider the other standards as well, uh, because there are only 48 standards which uh, we are going to cover in CSI exam. And uh, these standards are associated with partnership contracts, subordinating contracts, putting contracts, some financial rights, investment techniques, uh, investment management indices, and uh, some tools uh, regarding the stock market as well. But uh, all the technical and uh, the uh, standards associated with uh, modern applications and uh, uh, you can say like FinTech, uh, RegTech and other are uh, after 48 standards of Sharia. There are also standards for accounting uh, and IOFI has also published a separate book uh, for accounting and auditing standards as well. And there are code of ethics that are recently published by IOFI. They are, um, these guidelines are very comprehensive in the theoretical and practical format as well. So let's start discuss the exam format for uh, CISA. The exam is currently primarily based on the first 48 of Sharia standards, uh, as well as four standards from IOF governance standards. And uh, there is another book on Sharia audit. These Sharia standards are available in, in English and uh, so the governance standards are. And uh, with regard to the Sharia audit book, uh, as far as I'm aware, it is available only in Arabic. And I'm not sure if there is a translation of it is available, but don't worry about that. Uh, the TAIF is here for you for this. And uh, inshallah, there will be no 
any uh, sort of uh, complication in that in term of understanding or um, in any other <clears throat> any other issue will arise as far as the format of exam is concerned the exam is uh, currently a 3 hour exam and uh, it will be consist on 100 questions uh, like mcqs and true fault type questions and uh, you will require uh, uh, to write that exam at any exam center in your country like uh, i am in pakistan and uh, 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 we are here three exam centers here the first one is in uh, iba karachi and uh, the second one is also in karachi in uh, iobm institute of business management and the third one based in lahore uh, in minhaj university lahore Uh, here is an overview of what you will learn about. You will learn about Murabaha, Ijara, Salam, Istisna, Istijrar, Modes of Finance, and uh, and their applications, management of Islamic financial instruments, risk involved, the mitigation technology. Uh, risks involve the mitigation techniques, the nature of Islamic financial uh, system, the categories of Islamic financial contracts and uh, like indices, uh, uh, financial papers or uh, uh, different type of contracts. Uh, we are practicing in Islamic finance like mortgage, uh, pawnbroking, uh, you can say um, uh, different investment tools, uh, part tools for partnership, especially. Uh, there is a standard number six, which is very comprehensive and very important in all aspects. And that standard belongs to the conversion of an, a conventional bank into an Islamic bank, which is, uh, in my opinion, which is the ultimate objective of all these standards by grasping all the standards that uh, IOFI has uh, compiled in four different versions. The purpose of all those standards is to make you enable to convert a conventional business into an Islamic one. And this is all CISA all about. Now, uh, by discussing the course uh, on deadline, by Taif and uh, or uh, what we have designed for you at Taif is uh, it is almost a four week plan. And uh, in the first week, you are going to consult the 14 standards. You will be able to access 14 standards, 14 video lectures, along with uh, multiple quizzes. You will have a Taif brainstormer at the end of each video lecture, which is basically to assess the knowledge base of yours that will develop uh, after uh, consulting the video lecture. We basically want to assess your knowledge base after every video lecture that what you have got from that lecture. And what you have got is exactly the same that we want to make you know or is that something else? There is an application uh, for, uh, and there is an activity, or not an application, there is an activity after each video lecture with the term of Taif Brainstormer to assess, to make an assessment of that thing. There are multiple quizzes for you and uh, Alongside that, uh, there is a reading material and a discussion forum as well. You can make discussion with uh, your uh, peers and your uh, administrators. And 
same pattern will be adopted in second week. You will have um, 14 video lectures as well as multiple courses. 14 standards will be discussed in week three and there are 13 standards that uh, you will be going to consult in the fourth week. And uh, as we have discussed before, you have to consult 48 standards. Uh, the first standard, which is about the trading of currency and the last one, which is about khayarat or different options uh, uh, while dealing uh, with the uh, um, different Islamic financial and different financial instruments. These 48 standards along with four standards from the governance regarding internal Sharia auditing, Sharia governance, uh, um, like uh, formation of uh, Sharia board. And uh, there are three fundamental courses as well. Uh, we have designed for you to make your knowledge base before starting into the Sharia standards, which we have termed as uh, Sharia foundation courses. There are three Sharia foundation courses to make your knowledge base. And then you will start into the uh, uh, CSAA uh, routine uh, uh, syllabus, which is uh, comprising on 48 Sharia standards and uh, uh, four governance standards. As far as exam, uh, there is a there must be a question in your mind that uh, is there any recent policy <clears throat> for IOF CSA exam? Like uh, if someone uh, won't become successful in his first attempt, then is there any recent policy? Yes, there is a recent policy there, and uh, you have to pay a uh, uh, very little fee for that and uh, you can reset as many as you can. And this course, in my personal opinion, is uh, very much beneficial for the academicians or uh, like I frequently get connected with the individuals eager to enter the contemporary Islamic finance industry and uh, asking for recommendations regarding the uh, best Islamic finance qualification in the market. Uh, and uh, whenever uh, they discuss uh, about that, I strongly recommend them to consider IOFC SI exam as there are different qualifications available in the market. Uh, like uh, uh, we have uh, different uh, options from uh, UK or uh, uh, from Singapore and uh, from uh, USA as well. But uh, all the options that we have uh, are uh, have a different uh, sort of technicalities in that. But for the academicians, for uh, Sharia scholars, for uh, Islamic finance professionals, whenever someone has um, contacted me for advice uh, regarding what is the best qualification for them to take, uh, if they want to learn more about applied Sharia in contemporary Islamic finance industry, I always recommend uh, that they consider taking IOFE certified Sharia advisor and audit exam. And uh, like uh, uh, I have also made the same recommendation to juniors in my Sharia department that I have worked with. And uh, I have been meaning to write uh, uh, every Sharia department that I have worked uh, in has uh, in encouraged uh, my colleagues, I encourage my colleagues to uh, consider this exam because uh, not everyone here or uh, in academia or uh, in the professional market uh, has aimed to join Islamic finances as, as a career. Um, they have different options, like uh, if you are a businessman and uh, you are looking to transform your business from uh, uh, conventional 
side to an Islamic side or you want to make an assessment, is there any riba or interest-based element within your business practices or uh, you are associated with uh, some sort of uh, uh, international or multinational systems or you are working at, um, uh, you are a producer or you are a consumer primary, secondary, or tertiary level. At every level, these standards will make you so much enabled to guide yourself and the others as well. And the best practice to start with is IOF CSA exam. Because this exam will make you enable regarding all the principles that have been compiled by expert of Sharia all around the world on a single table. And they compiled all the standards which are acceptable for all Muslims to make a standardization or uniformity in terms of Islamic financial products. And to grasp all this information in a single volume, the only option we have available in market is IOF exam. Now the question is, why Taif? And the answer for this question is that Taif has many features that other available options won't have. Like, this course is the first one self-paced course that you can undertake with the, your without disturbing your level of ease or your level of comfort. You can access material by just accessing the LMS provided by Taif. There are video lectures available for you. You can access uh, video lectures anytime you want. You can have different mock exams which are exactly designed in term or uh, in professionally, or you can say in quality or in professional essence, like you will have to see while sitting for CISA exam by IOF. We have experience of uh, developing all these things uh, for more than 12 years, Alhamdulillah, and uh, consulting all different options and uh, uh, by uh, looking uh, deep into what IOFI is uh, um, designing in different years for CSI exam within a year and after or even in the days of pandemic, we closely look what is going on. And after that, we have designed different uh, MCQs, exercise, different quizzes, different brainstormers, and finally a mock exam for you to go through. And inshallah, uh, I believe that after uh, going through all these exercises, everyone, every one of you, um, who will enroll within this course will definitely enable to attempt the IOF CSI exam. With all that said, uh, I must take your leave. Uh, if you have any question, you can ask me uh, later on. And now uh, I am uh, forwarding this mic to Brother Zia. Thank you very much. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Jazakallah khair, uh, Mufti Fahad, thank you very much for uh, explaining things in detail. And I'm sure whoever is listening uh, would have have a clear understanding of how it works and uh, what is the importance of CISA and other uh, trainings that are provided by IOFI. Um, I would uh, request uh, Mufti Mubashir to take the mic and introduce himself and tell what is he uh, teaching in this course and how he thinks that student can benefit. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. 
نحمده ونصلي على رسول الكريم أما بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم أبريقوان أوب يو آل آر فاين and enjoying the life alhamdulillah so today uh, welcome to the iop csaa preparatory webinar by dive digital institute uh, which is about uh, internal and external auditing governance framework along with the management and treatment of financial instrument uh, in compliance with standard provided by iop for Islamic financial institutions. So before we proceed, let me give you a little bit of uh, background about myself. Uh, my name is uh, Mubashur Ahmad Qureshi, and I'm currently working as a Sharia advisor, instructor, and lecturer associate with various national and international organizations. Assalamu alaikum brother, we cannot hear you. Are you trying to upload something? Uh, now you can hear me? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, <clears throat> and I'm one of your uh, trainer of this course. And I'm also belong from Pakistan, Lahore. And I joined uh, one of the most attending and prestigious Islamic seminaries like Islamic uh, Sharpia University Lahore. And after that, I done my master's in Islamic banking and finance uh, from Inhad University. And I done my master in business administration uh, in finance from Virtual University of Pakistan. And my PhD is uh, in, in progress, Alhamdulillah. Along with aforementioned uh, as a part of my professional qualification. Uh, I'm also a CIA certified uh, internal auditor and CA, CAIA as well. And uh, with industrial engagement, also uh, I spent time in academia and taught course in Sharia auditing, product development and Sharia screening. And uh, indices, uh, now for over a decade. And uh, I have seen a lot of learners come and go, and I understand, and I think what can help you understand how CSAA at values. And it's my pleasure to be the instructor for this course. So uh, after I introduce your, uh, myself, You are on mute, <clears throat> Brother Mubashir. Yes. Uh, now you can hear me? Yes, yes. Okay. So, uh, Mufti Fahad, alhamdulillah, uh, in detail, uh, mentioning already about the CS preparatory course, uh, about it, IOFI Sharia standards, and why we need to join uh, uh, this preparatory course, and how they uh, add value in yourself. So uh, I would like to just add on a little bit on it. So uh, let me overview uh, about it, in, uh, about this course. So in this, in this course, uh, we will cover the principles and practices of Islamic financial institutions. And you also learn about uh, the trading in currency, Islamic financial institute instruments, 
and challenges in the development and incubation of Islamic financial project. And this course also explains you the operations, financial rights, options to terminate a contract, along with various types of financial papers and financial markets. And you also learn extensively about financial laws as applied to Islamic belief and laws. And this will allow the ability to uh, apply journal as well as Islamic financial uh, concepts uh, within the world of corporate banking and business. Not only for Muslim, but both Muslim and non-Muslim participants will have the benefit of the Constantly, constantly, uh, constantly growing, involving field that is ripe with opportunities. And uh, as Mufti Fahad uh, have already uh, tell us about the uh, Sharia standards, there are forty-eight Sharia standards and uh, four governance standards in this course. So, uh, in my part, uh, I have. Uh, uh, 16, uh, 15 lectures from uh, Sharia standards and uh, three governance standards uh, uh, in this course in CSWA. So uh, we will uh, learn in this course about investment agency, rules of calculating profit, how we can calculate our profit and what about the uh, Sharia regulations, about the debit card, charge card. And uh, also we will learn about the uh, procrastinating debt, what are the Sharia guidelines regarding it, how we can hire the person and uh, about the guarantee and shirka, how many types of shirka and how we can do the party, uh, partnerships with each other and what are the Sharia guidelines regarding it and uh, how we can control of error in the financial transactions, uh, Mudarba contract, uh, distribution of profit in Mudarba based investment accounts. And what are the Sharia regulations about the, the loan, which is called CORD. And uh, from the governance standard, uh, we will learn about uh, the Sharia review and internal Sharia review and the audit and governance committee for Islamic financial institution. So Alhamdulillah, uh, we will learn all about it in this course, inshallah. And uh, the best part of this course is uh, we will try to make so much easy for you. And so that uh, you can easily understand the concept of uh, all these standards, inshallah. And because the agenda of types uh, digital institutions is not only you just pass out the exam, but uh, also uh, type digital institute wants to change your life. After you learn about all these standards and you know how to uh, uh, dealing with the uh, uh, different, uh, how to uh, do different transactions uh, regarding different businesses. And uh, so that it will be make your life change also as well. So it will not only change, uh, you pass out the exam, but also inshallah your life will be changed as well also, because uh, when you will apply yourselves uh, and near yourselves, uh, near to the Sharia, and you're trying yourselves to uh, uh, follow these instructions, uh, what's the um, uh, Sharia guidelines about it. So inshallah, your life will be become more good and more blessing inshallah. And uh, in this uh, preparatory course, we prepared a various type of assessment like mock text and uh, MCQs and uh, different type of quizzes. So which will count towards your final grade. And uh, it will help you to understand about the Sharia uh, IOP uh, exam. So that how much you will need to 
learn more about it so that you can get a better grade about it. So I wish you an uh, exciting and valuable learning experience and see you in course, inshallah. So thank you very much. Uh, I put forward the, I would like to forward the mic to Brother Zia uh, so that uh, they continue this session. Thank you so much, Jazakallah. Asalaamu Alaikum. Thank you very much, uh, Brother Mubashir, uh, for uh, the nice explanation. Uh, I wonder if uh, Brother Mufti Rafi is available. Oh, mashallah, he's available. Asalaamu Alaikum, Brother Mufti Rafi. Can you kindly adjust your camera a bit? Asalaamu Alaikum wa rahmatullah. Asalaamu Alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa Alaikum Asalaamu wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Welcome, Brother uh, Rafi. Uh, Thank you so very much. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. We can hear you very well. Yeah, great. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So, mic is yours, brother Rafe. Please go ahead. Nahmaduhu wa nusalli wa nusalli ma ala rasulihi al kareem amma baad. My name is Rafe Shab Usmani. And uh, I am from uh, Lahore, Pakistan. Greetings and welcome to the AFEC CSA AA course by Taif Institution, which is about internal and external auditing governance framework, along with management and treatment of financial instruments in compliance with the standards provided by AOP. My name is Rafesh Usmani, and I am one of your trainer in this course. Let let me give you a little bit background of my, uh, about myself. I was born in 1987, completed my Hifz Quran in 1999, done with my high school in Lahore, Pakistan. Then I joined Ashrafia Islamic University, also called Jamia Ashrafia, one of the most authentic and prestigious institution for Sharia education in the world, in this, and studied there for six years. Afterward, I joined Jamia Darul Ulum Karachi. The institution operates, operates under the supervision of Mufti Azam Pakistan, Mufti Rafi Usmani Damat Barakatun, and his younger brother, <coughs> Sheikhul Islam Mufti Taqi Usmani Sahab Damat Barakatun. I have completed my Darsal Izami from there. After, after that, I joined Darul Ifta, Jamia Darul Ulum Karachi for Ifta course called Takhassus Fil Ifta and completed the same from there. Afterward, I came back to Lahore and start teaching and fatwa writing in Jamia Ashrafia Lahore. In the meanwhile, simultaneously, I continue studying other studies and finally completed my MS in Islamic Banking and Finance from University of Management and Technology, Lahore. In my professional career, I have been associated with different educational institutions, including Jamia Ashrafia, Jamia Mahadud Tirmizi, Jamia Masjid Sheikha Salim, Islamic University Bahawalpur, University of Management and Technology, Minhaj University, etc. And I have also been associated with different financial institutions and business institutions. Since past almost three plus years, I'm associated with Taqwa Islamic Banking, the Bank of Punjab, as a Sharia board member, working as an RSBM, resident Sharia board member. In this course of Islamic financial institutions, you will also le learn different transactional structures, murabaha, musawama, salam, Istisna, trading in currencies, etc. And you will also we will also discuss in this course operations and financial rights, options to terminate a contract, along with various types of financial papers in financial market. You will learn extensively about financial laws as applied to Islamic ben, uh, beliefs and laws. Inshallah, this course will allow the ability to apply. This course will allow the ability to apply general as well as Islamic financial concepts within the world of corporate, 
banking and business this course inshallah will help all participants even if they are muslims or a non muslims this course inshallah will help to understand and constantly uh, in the industry of constantly growing and evolving field that is ripe with opportunities banks corporate businesses and financial institutions inshallah participants who have completed this course will help the industry by providing a qualified experts in the field as a matter of fact you are not required to have a previous knowledge about islamic banking and finance business or sharia to attend this course however if you have a basic knowledge of any of them it will be an advantage as explained by other different participants for example mufti uh, fahad qureshi sahab that we have also prepared various types of assessment which will count towards your financial fi uh, final grades participants inshallah myself in my, uh, uh, i will be covering the uh, different 18 standards one is governing standard number 1 and other different 17 sharia standards from the a official uh, from the sharia standards inshallah i will cover courses including sharia standard number uh, sharia standard number 14 sharia standard number 15 sharia standard number 16 18 22 23 24 25 26 28 30 32 36 37 41 42 44 and governing standard number 1 this is all from my side now i will hand over to brother zia jazakallahu khair assalam alaikum Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Quite uh, amazing and pleasing once again. <laughs> thank you very much all. I uh, think it's time now uh, to go to some questions. Some of the questions uh, like we have been answering uh, uh, live. Uh, but uh, if you have any of you have any other question which is not answered yet will appreciate asan uh, can you help us find any of the questions yeah okay there is one question from uh, to brother mufti uh, fahad are you available brother can you switch on your camera yes yes brother i am available yeah <laughs> i think there is a question for you for brother kamech bef umru zakuf uh, forgive me for if my wrong pronunciation she is from somewhere in cis states is asking how many muslim world recognize sharia accounting auditing and governance is standard organizations and what is the difference among them okay uh brother uh, please uh, profound apologies that uh, i won't uh, recognize your name or i'm not able to pronounce it right now but uh, as far as your question is concerned um, and uh, as far as my knowledge uh, allow me uh, or the research that i have conducted so far uh, there are almost 18 countries that have adopted different uh, iof sharia standards uh, like in pakistan uh, there are almost more than 12 standards that uh, we have adopted and uh, there is also an intention by the state bank that uh, our state bank will become 100% iof compliant within a couple of years uh, ma like uh, uae um, united arab emirates is 100% iof compliant system and uh, there are some other countries like uh, uh, you can say oman or uh, there are some countries in scandinavia 
and Europe as well that uh, have adopted uh, IOFIS, CSAA. Uh, IOFIS provided standards, either in terms of Sharia or accounting or auditing, but uh, there are almost more than uh, 18 countries that have adopted IOFIS, Sharia, IOFIS standards, either in uh, full compliance or in partial, partial compliance. Okay. Uh, Brother Zia, what was the second part of the question, uh, please? You were saying that uh, currently how many the Muslim world recognize Sharia accounting? Just one second. Sorry, let me check again. Uh, there are how many organizations and how, what is the difference between them? In terms of like Sharia standard setting bodies, how many bodies are there and what is the difference between them? I think the uh, major major one is IUFI and then like uh, there is uh, IFSB also. Yeah. Yes. There are uh, three recognized bodies there. There is Sibafi, there is uh, IFSB and IOFI. But the two major bodies are uh, IOFI, which is based in Bahrain, and the second one is IFSB, International Financial Services Board, which is of Malaysia and operated under Central Bank or Bank Nigara Malaysia. Hope I answered the question. Yeah, thank, you. thank you very much. Uh, there is uh, one question I will answer that. Abdul Qadir Hassan is asking, how will the exam be? Will it be online or physical? The exam will be... Um, it will depend on the location where you are based. Uh, IUFI has examination centers in different locations. There are like two types of uh, registered organizations IUFI has, uh, rather three. One is uh, the exam registration centers where you can register for exam. Uh, IUFI uh, TAIF is one examination registration center. So you can register with TAIF online and then digitally for the exam for IUFI. We are an IUFI approved examination registration center. The other one is uh, the examination center where you physically appear for examination. So it will depend on where you are and uh, there is a list available. So you can, uh, based on the list, if you have uh, a center in your country, I'm not sure brother Abdul Qadir where you are based. If you're in your country like Indonesia, I could not find any examination center. So the people applying from Indonesia or Tanzania or Kenya, where there is no examination center. Nigeria, there are approved examination centers by UFI. So if there is an examination center, you will have to appear in the exam and that center. If there is no examination center in that location, then you can uh, register through TAIF and then we can, uh, you can, uh, uh, you can, uh, we can request for a remote examination by IUFI. IUFI also has a remote examination uh, option available. Uh, Kathmandu, Nepal, I think will be the same. You can, uh, Brother Pradeep, uh, you can register for the TAIF course and you can register online uh, with TAIF as uh, for the examination. And uh, if there is no center in Nepal, most probably there is none, uh, we will request for you for a remote examination facility. Uh, Somalia, I'm not sure where there is a center or not, but like uh, we can check and we can confirm. I believe there is examination. Uh, if like a general rule, as a general rule, if there is no examination center, there is like a, uh, is the first class, Abdul Halim is asking, please, is this the first class of the course? Does that mean the class will be holding on Saturdays? How long will the course take? Uh, Brother Abdul Halim, this is just an introductory webinar for uh, CSAA course. This is not the class. There will not be any live class for CSA and CIPA courses. There will um, they, these are both of them are self-paced courses, which mean like you can attend the classes at your convenience. These will be digital contents. You will be given login to the portal. You can uh, uh, access the portal, and then if you have any question or any issue, then you can you can ask uh, uh, you can ask uh, 
for any explanation you will have access through the portal to ask questions from the instructors and we will organize like if need be we will organize the physical interactive sessions with the instructors as well uh, uh brother uh, brother fahad the other brother who asked he was his question was from kyrgyzstan and he says he would be we can call him abdur rahim the uh, one we were not able to pronounce the name correctly he says you can call me abdur rahim so you can say assalam alaikum to brother abdur rahim assalam alaikum sir okay anas abdul qadir there is a question salam need to know how much exactly i'm going to pay for preparation courses plus sitting in uh, official exam i'm living in saudi arabia exactly in jeddah city is there an examination center uh, brother uh, anas uh, you can send an email i don't remember all the examination centers uh, there must be some exam center in jeddah but you can register for iufi examination through us and uh, there are like fees which is uh, uh for uh, for uh, there is fee which is applicable to gcc and fee which is applicable to people out of gcc uh out of gcc is 800 us dollar and within gcc just give me a second so that i don't tell you a fee which is not correct unless any of the instructors is uh, willing to help me with the information i think within the gcc it is 1200 dollar but uh, just give me a second and i will reconfirm so you will have to pay the iu fee, fee and then you will have to pay 199 dirham which is uh, which is yeah the csa uh, for uh, for the candidates which are in gcc the fees for iu fee is 1200 dollar and the candidates which are not in gcc the fee is 800 dollar and uh, you have to pay 199 us dollar the, for the preparatory class if you attend the preparatory class uh, brother anas i hope uh, uh, my answer is clear you can send us an email at contact at taif uh, learning.com are these standard accepted by international accounting and auditing organization or this is a parallel structure brother babar this is a parallel structure for specialized these are specialized accounting standards so there is coordination between these so uh, these are uh, uh, ifrs are applicable for uh, mainly journal or any specific nature of businesses for there is no specific Uh, ifrs uh, guidelines on islamic financial institutions and their reporting so this is uh, this is a parallel structure exchange karne jao to agar karna ho to do cheezon ka khayal rakhna hoga agar aap homogeneous exchange kar rahe hain brother homogeneous well, yes yeah, so brother rafi i think is is in another another uh, lecture so are these like so uh, my answer is uh, to the extent uh, they are like they are in developing these standards effort is being made to make sure that they are they are not inconsistent with ifr so these are a special purpose specialized uh, financial institutions uh, standards how can we register for this course and you please tell us fee uh, click uh, brother anonymous attend i like we would like we see you quite often can you type your name because we don't we see you in several of our webinars but we don't see your name so uh, the registration is easy you go to taiflearning.com uh, or you go to our uh, linkedin page uh, click on the link and there is a registration you will get all the complete information along with the link for the Uh, for the digitalized forms we have digitalized the forms as well so sitting in lahore you can uh, just register for the course and fortunately all these three gentlemen the three of your trainers are based in lahore as well so uh, if you are based, if you are in lahore you can contact any of them and they will guide you as well for uh, 
registering through TAIF, you need to just, as I said, you just click on the, uh, click on uh, the links. Uh, you will get all the information with link to all the, uh, all the forms that are there. Uh, Babar Azim is asking about the fee again. Fee, Babar, I assume maybe, I'm not sure where you are based. Uh, uh, if you are based in a country which is uh, in GCC, you will have to pay 1,200. If you are in a country which is not in GCC, you have to pay a U fee $800. Yeah, Pakistan, you will have to pay a U fee fee of $800 US dollar and $199 US dollar fee for TAIF. <coughs> Or Taif, uh, brother Fahad is working on a concessional thing as well. We are developing a, a, a knowledge test also. So if you do some small uh, study and then you attempt that course and that course will be available on our page soon, then you might get some discounts on whatever you will score on your course will be able to get discount to that extent. Okay, brother Fardil uh, is asking, is the course enough to pass the CSA exam? Will it cover everything needed to, we hope we have tried our best. Uh, these instructor, there is a lot of uh, uh, training material there. And uh, inshallah, this is our best effort that you should pass the examination. Uh, how to pay exam fee from Nepal, brother Pradeep, when you will register through us, we will send you an invoice. The exam fee will be payable through, exam fee for IU fee will be payable to IU fee. We will guide you, send us an email and we will guide you through the whole process. The process will be like this. You fill in uh, for uh, the exam registration. Uh, you, we, uh, we will forward you all the exam forms. You fill those forms, forward to us the information, we will send them to IUFI. IUFI will uh, send you an invoice for the exam registration fee payment. You pay the exam fee, then or maybe earlier, you can register in parallel for uh, TAIF, TAIF fee. TAIF fee you can pay through credit card, Visa Master or PayPal. And once you pay the fee, the TAIF course material will be accessible to you. You prepare for the exam and then you appear and then you qualify inshallah. What are the difference between lecture fees and examinations fee? Those are already chartered accountant. Uh, brother Abdullah, <coughs> uh, if you are a chartered accountant uh, from anywhere, uh, there is unfortunately for CSA, there is no exception exemption available. So there is nothing much, but see uh, there is another exam from IUFI, which is CIPA, Certified Islamic Professional Accountant. You will get uh, two papers because uh, here CSA, there is only one paper of 100 marks. So uh, one paper that is there, so there is no exemption. But uh, there uh, you have qualification, you have exemptions from uh, two papers. You only have to appear for two papers. Uh, just check our LinkedIn page and click on the link and you will get a detailed email. The detailed email have been automated. So anybody who will click on the TAIF link uh, for CSA or CIPA will get the information. If you don't get the information, you can write to us always at contact at taiflearning.com. How sure the training will... <laughs> My brother, the training... No training in the world can give you a certificate that you will pass the exam. You will be the one who will have to pass the exam. So, sir, so I cannot say the assurance is between zero and 100, depending on how well you prepare. Is there opportunity for installment payment? Uh, yes, uh, TAIF fees can be paid in installment. A U fee fee can also be paid in installment. A U fee fee for the exam can be paid in one or two installment. TAIF fee also you can pay if you want, then you will have financial problem, we can facilitate one or two, so you can pay in two installments. Okay, in Nigeria, we are having restrictions on foreign transfers. Yes, brother Yakubu, we are available. We are aware of it, we can help you. You can do a transfer 
using PayPal, you can do a bank transfer. Some of your colleagues have done bank transfers. And if nothing of them works, let us know and we'll find you a, pay, a way to pay us in Naira. So where there is a will, there is a way, okay? When the exam will be held, yeah. First, before I answer your question, I want to know your name. Kindly type your name. Assalamu alaikum, Chicago, USA, originally from Sialkot. Welcome. Could you explain the one year fellowship requirement listed on IUFI CSA in uh, landing page and how to fulfill that fellowship requirement? Yeah. These requirements are, need to be completed only after you have qualified uh, as the qualified the examination. So brother Kamran, have you done the exam first? So once you do the exam, then uh, then that is a requirement. Send us an email. I don't remember it, um, all the details of the fellowship requirement. Uh, I don't know any of my panelists can help, but we can, I would prefer that we can, you send us an email and we can respond to you in the email after checking from IUFI and be sure about. There is another thing that I can recommend to you is that there is a detailed presentation on the web page, on our page or on the page for this as well, which is a presentation from um, brother uh, Farhan Nu, the, who is the head of capacity building at uh, IUFI. Uh, that is very comprehensive. I would ref request you to kindly have a look at that presentation. And brother Kamran, kindly send us an email and then we will uh, respond to you. Okay. Uh, yeah, brothers. Okay, so brothers, Saad has asked when the examination will be held. Uh, examination, the coming most earliest examination is coming in June, so end of June. So the last date for that examination is uh, May 27. So this is the, the, the latest. Then uh, there will be next exam, I believe will be in, just one second, I think next exam will be in September or just one second. I will tell you in a second. The second session will be in September. So you can, uh, yeah, so you can either register for May or then the next examination will be in September. Okay. Uh, from, okay. Thank you very much. Uh, okay. Okay, I think uh, so if we are already registered for the exam, can we have access to the course? Yes, definitely. The registration for the exam and registration for, uh, for the course are two different things. So if you have, like, as I mentioned, you can either register through us and then uh, you can uh, have like you, you can go for both or you can also go for only, if you have already registered for the course, you can, uh, if you are already registered for the course, you are still able to go and register for the preparatory classes from uh, TAIF. Okay, I think uh, that's, uh, that takes care of uh, all the questions. Uh, Unless uh, I would request uh, now our uh, panelists, uh, if they are available to kindly maybe make some concluding remarks and then we close this session. If you, any of you, <laughs> there is another question. I don't know. Somebody is asking, is this course beneficial for females? Asia, uh, females. Yes, definitely. Sharia knowledge is, uh, uh, there is no restriction on Sharia auditor or Sharia advisor can only be male. Rather, we would recommend and we would suggest and we would encourage. And we have like few students or lady who are female and who are registering. So you are most welcome and encouraged. Ladies need to contribute uh, surely. Okay. Uh, so brother Fahad, yeah, if you would like to 
make some brief uh, concluding remarks. Bismillah rahman rahim I hope uh, all the participants are uh, very much aware of what the IOFCS double is all about and uh, how the IF has designed this course for you and what we have at TAIF for you to get prepared for actual IOFC science. Uh, here, I want to uh, make you aware about a thing that the motive or the objective of IOF and TAIF, both uh, qualification, is to develop a human resource or generate a human resource that are enough capable and qualified to handle uh, the contemporary issues that we are facing in our contemporary Islamic finance market, but not only in Islamic finance market, but also all the associated market with uh, that are associated with different uh, business models and uh, different uh, multinational situations um, um, like uh, we need uh, specialized specialized resources in our halal food industry uh, we need uh, specialized uh, specialized resources in pharmaceuticals uh, we need specialized resources in halal tourism and travel uh, this qualification not only provides you or enables you to start your career within Islamic finance industry. But this will also make you able to become an entrepreneur by starting your very own Islamic business consultancy as well. This, this will be a great opportunity to become a qualified Islamic business consultant as well. Inshallah, we have tried our level best to uh, bring this course with all the professional uh, uh, abilities and with all the quality specifications that we have set for this course. Inshallah, this course will not only enable you to make qualify the IOF CSAR fellowship, but also provides you with a deeper insight of all the Islamic financial instruments so that you can handle uh, whatever situation you are facing or you are going to face at different platforms. With all, all that said, I wish you very best of luck and uh, uh, I must pray to Allah that uh, uh, he'll guide us the right path and uh, always make us stay, make us uh, on uh, Sirati Mustaqim and uh, bless us with the knowledge that is useful for this world and for the hereafter as well. Jazakumullah. Over to Brother Jazakumullah. Assalamu alaikum. Amin. Wa alaikum salam. Thank you very much, uh, Brother Mubashir. You want to say something? Add a few words, just concluding. You need to switch on your mic, please. Yeah, mashallah, uh, Mufti Fahda Mekureji already uh, mentioned everything uh, in very detail. And just I pray for all of you and that uh, may Allah bless you in every field of life and makes our life uh, more better than what we have. So inshallah, uh, I would like to see you soon for this course, inshallah. Thank you very much. Jazakallah khairan. Thank you very much, uh, brother. Thank you very much uh, all for your participation. Uh, this uh, was a nice and exciting interaction. Uh, uh, just always remember we are available anytime uh, you want uh, uh, any information or anything. Uh, our support, TAIF is more than happy and pleased to be of any service and support to you. So with this, uh, uh, it comes to the end of this session.